Hi, and uh, welcome to another Hopper on 6502 video. This is about the minimal runtime and getting it running on the 6502. So let's have a look at this. Um, this is the 6502 uh, runtime, which is uh, written in Hopper 6502 assembly, um, which is slightly different from regular assembly in that it has if statements and switch statements and loops and things. Anyway. Um, my goal was to try to keep the hopper runtime small, preferably under 16k, because the version I wrote last year got as big as 22k. And if I can keep it under 16k, um, then we can have, uh, yeah, you, know, you know, we can have it on a board that has uh, 48k of RAM instead of only 32k of RAM. So it's, it is a good reason to do it. Um, so the first types implemented in the minimal runtime, the first reference types uh, that I implemented were strings and arrays. So um, if we go and look at syscalls here, they're right near the front here. And if you go and look in the source, um, you know, this is the, the source for the array. It's only 400 lines long because most of the array has, the, most of the array APIs have to be implemented in assembly. They can't be implemented in hopper. I'm navigating by pressing control backspace and clicking on things if I right click on string. String is also 800, you know, 800 lines long in Hopper uh, 6502 assembly just to get an idea of scale. Um, but most of the string APIs are written in Hopper. Um, you know, manipulation APIs, the ones you come to expect from like languages like C Sharp and Java, all the string manipulation APIs. And the reason I, that those are included always in the portable runtime is because they're easy to do. Because in Hopper arrays, your array members can only be, can only be value types. And strings content is also, um, you know, a list of characters. You can't, it's not a reference type. It's one big monolithic chunk of stuff that is the, that is the string reference type. Um, the same is true of longs and floats, which are 32-bit types, so they don't fit inside the hopper 16-byte uh, uh, stack slot. So they're implemented as reference types as well. So strictly speaking, they're easy to do as well. And if you look at the implementations here, um, 200 and something lines, and float is a little bigger. No, floats, oh no, floats super tiny. Floats super, super tiny. And the reason is because I wrote IEEE floating point in Hopper, which is hideously slow, but it didn't chew up any of my ROM space. So you can do small things with it, like you want to, you know, calculate a benchmark in seconds and or in milliseconds, which is a long, and then divide it by a thousand to get you some seconds. As long as you don't use it extensively, it's um, tolerable. But if you try to actually do floating point stuff, it's going to be hideously slow. Okay, so what about lists and dictionaries? Well, they're complicated types. Um, and the reason is because you can nest other reference types uh, in lists and in dictionaries. So you can have a list of lists or a list of strings. And once you do that, um, you make life a lot trickier for um, memory management. So um, the two places that are obvious is release, um, where it has to check what kind of reference object it's releasing. So, as I was saying, for string, array, float, long, they don't have any reference members that need to be cleared, whereas a list does. So you have to recursively call into, into this clear method. Um, and recursion is tough in, on the 6502 because you've got a very limited actual stack and my implementation of all these types is done mostly with zero page variables. So you end up recursively having to push them. And the other one is clone. So clone, part of the memory management in Hopper is a um, copy on write. So um, if you make a, and when it makes that copy, it's got to do a clone behind the scenes. And again, there's a generic clone that works for um, these reference types because they don't have other reference types inside them. Whether as a, whereas a list, you have to clone using a you know, list clone. And if I right click on that, 
um, list clone has to be very, very conscious of what it's touching and using and what it has to store in reserve, what it has to preserve um, so that it can hierarchically uh, call, um, where is it, call it, the reference type here, it's calling garbage collector clone, the GC clone, the memory, garbage collector is actually memory manager. So it's very, very careful to preserve what you're doing on these recursive calls. So it's a lot more complex. And for that reason, the list implementation is, you know, 1500 lines long. Um, it's a lot, it, it, yeah, it, there's a lot more work to it. Um, because all these things that look like variable names here, they're all de uh, defined in the zero page. And I'm very careful about how the zero page is used and all these comments in here about um, so that memory management doesn't stomp on function calls, etc., etc., And they have little prefixes to let me know what they were. Anyway, let's go have a look at it. So um, I've got this test here, uh, you know, to test this, which was basically written by Ch ChatGPT, not by me. I gave it some examples of how tests look and it sort of did, did its thing. So F5, um, I've already compiled it, that should load it. So at the bottom of the screen, it says uploading into, and that means it's uploading it onto the um, 6502. Well, we wait. Um, so let's go put some breakpoints in and we'll go see what happens in this one. And then uh, that red line means it's a breakpoint there. Let's go to, um, well, what's the other one called? Clone list. There it is, so we can stop here as well. Okay, and then we'll hit F5. All the, all the uh, shortcuts are on these menus up here with the Visual Studio key, so F5. So we're in the first one. We've made ourselves a list. This is a trivial list of value types. Here it is. So if I double click on it, I can see the whole thing in case it's bigger than what we've put on the screen. And, you know, it's just appending value types to a list and then running through them. Um, you can iterate through a list like with the for each here. Uh, um, so you can, you know, step through it and you can see as I step in there, what my, my item is, the next one, the item is now on the fourth one, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you've got all these different lists. So, so it's got a contains, so does it contain 999, uh, it contained 15. So the previous test said, yes, that's good. We'll pass. Um, oh, I can do that. So there, uh, you can see it, you know, contains past the previous one and the next one should say uh, it doesn't contain uh, that, yes. And contains sounds trivial, except that um, things like string compare are written in hopper in the minimum runtime. So if we go and look at them, as I was saying, most of string is written in hopper, not in, uh, not in assembly. So here we are on the string unit, and if we look for compare, you know, there's string compare all written in hopper. So I don't have that in 6502. Um, control backspace to go where I was. Um, so since I don't have that in 6502, if I'm going to do a contains check on a string, I have to somehow compare uh, reference types. And the same is true of floats and longs. Um, because we don't just want two identical looking strings with, um, you know, it, it, they might not have the same reference. So you can have two, multiple references with um, f with the same string content or multiple references of a float with the same content in the float. But when you do a contains on a, on a, on a list, you want to know if the value is contained, you know, the actual value of not, uh, rather than the specific object. Okay, let's say five to go to our other breakpoint that I put on plain list. So we've passed a few more tests. So there we have our plain list, which is a list of strings, one, two, three. Um, now we're going to make a list of lists and a list of list of lists. That's the syntax for lists in Hopper. And here they're on the right in the um, in the debugger. So if I click on them, I get to see they're empty. The list of lists is empty and the list of lists of lists is empty. OK, so now let's app append the plain list to list of lists. And there it is. So now we have uh, two brackets on either end because it's a list with a single item in it, which is another list of strings. And then we can append that to list of list of lists. And there you go. And the only constraint on the sort of level of recursion that you can do is like your stack limits of your machine. And 
it doesn't hammer the 256 byte 6502 stack. Um, it's got its own, the hopper has its own stack, but um, in this implementation, that's also limited to 256 slots. Uh, but for most of the things I've been doing, that seems to be uh, enough. You know, unless you're deliberately creating something with a whole ton of recursion, you're not going to run into trouble with it. Yeah, and then these tests will continue and pass. And I'm going to press F5 here because you'll see how slow the, uh, if we go and look at the floating point tests, uh, let's go have a look there. We put a breakpoint in there. Right, so off it goes. Now it's creating a list of floating point values. And it's starting to append. And as I press F10, look how long it takes just to convert and append a value. So that's how long it takes to make a minus 10. I'll do this 40 and I'll count it. It's like one crocodile, two crocodiles, three crocodiles. So it takes about three seconds just to create a floating point value. Anyway, so if I hit a five to get through here, um, you'll see it'll take quite a long time to finish the tests. Um, anyhow, uh, I think that is enough about uh, lists for now. I'm still considering writing dictionaries. There we go, test finished. So let's switch back to the other, other screen. So this is the runtime again, rather than the tests. And the current runtime size without lists is still only about 10Ks. So it fits well within my 16Ks that I was um, trying to stick in, stick to. Um, by adding lists, I added about 20% to that. So it's now up to about um, 12Ks, call it 12Ks. So if I add dictionaries, there's a very good chance I'm going to overshoot my 16K um, self-imposed you know, limit. Um, and dictionaries are every bit as uh, tricky to implement as lists have been. Lists took me a couple of days. And I took my previous implementation from last year and basically ported it to this new platform. Um, but certain things have changed, so it wasn't entirely trivial to do it. And I feel dictionaries will... Um, give me the same amount of pain. So I might put, put off dictionaries for a while and use this for a while and see if I miss them yet or not. Anyhow, um, that's the story of getting uh, lists implementa implemented on the 6502. Adding this one structural uh, type um, is quite a big deal because there's another type in Hopper, another reference type, which is called records. And records are actually just, the, the records don't add anything to the runtime at all. They're a purely compiler feature. And records are implemented internally as a list of variant types. So your members in your record are um, just a, a, you know, a sequential list of vari variant types. And records are really great for... Um, you know, implementing code in Hopper that makes that's easy because we don't have type, we don't have objects in Hopper. So records like they like Pascal records uh, make it much easier to uh, implement sort of structured types. And you can have lists of records because, like I said, they're implemented as lists, and I've just tested that we can do lists of lists. So in addition to bringing lists to the six five zero two table. We now have uh, records uh, running on the 6502 as well. Um, so yeah, the only remaining uh, major feature of the language that's not present yet on the 6502, actually there's two significant features. The one is dictionaries, and the other one is being able to launch another executable. And you know, there's a lot of runtime library stuff that's uh, missing as well, like it's no file system yet. Um, but that's relatively easy to implement uh, whereas launching a second executable from within the one executable, which is very common on Windows or on, you know, that's how the editor and the debugger and the compiler and everything work that way. And it's well implemented. Everything is completely implemented on the um, microcontroller runtime. But we're a little bit limited by what we can do with 64K on a, on a 6502, so I haven't really had cause to implement that yet. I'll probably do a file system long before I do that. So, um, I think I'll leave 6502 in this state for a while now and move on to other things that are on my chore list. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll add some playlists at the end of this video to more on the hopper on 6502 and the minimal, minimal runtime.